And uh, you just listen to a young girl who was saying that the Nigerian community here is totally very angry. It covers all those aspects of making the various things of our people. It was the Ijeo country of the Niger Delta of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He went to several schools. His major academic genesis was at the government way. college, yeah, Ujeli. Go, on, go, gather, um, destroy their food. With the with the camp, and, uh, and um, that other camp, some other camp, you don't compensate everybody. But some of them. In its key generation, sometimes today our focus will be on the style of JP Clark, a poet and writer, and we shall also be very interested in his poem Akbo Dancer. Some lives are meaningful. Some are empty. With too much meaning and riches to offer humankind. Now, after some of these earthly adventures and no more, one can still find footprints of these great lives on the pavements of our contemporary lives. Good evening, you're welcome to the program Green Planet. The African Center for Community and Development, with collaboration from the Limbe Botanic Garden and other stakeholders in development, organized a workshop in Isokolo, Cameroon on the team Fighting Poverty and Engaging Conservation Through Sounds 2009. Amidst the participants and the presenters uh, was the representative of Positive Global Coalition, Mr. Ndipa Ray Kingsley, Mr. Tegen Fobinian Denicho, who is an independent consultant, the head of administration of the Limbe Botanic Garden, Mr. Joseph Mbele, as well as a representative of the Pan-African Institute in Boya, Miss Elizabeth Mary Itare. We are not talking about Angela Merkel, or are we talking about Hillary Clinton? It's like we have a lady coming on here. So, we are going to be talking on curbing poverty by involving women in conservation. Here we have a dynamic lady, Miss Elizabeth Mary of Pan African Institute. Madam, you have the floor. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm sorry, I have to apologize to my friends. <laughs> I would like to thank the director of African Center for Community and Development. I would recommend him that he's a real development worker for taking into consideration gender. And giving me the opportunity. And by giving me the opportunity to do this presentation, I'll give a talk on gender in development and fighting against poverty. Anyway, I shall be pre uh, presenting a paper on curbing poverty by involving women in conservation. It's widely realized that successful conservation cannot be fully achieved unless the needs and priorities of local communities, as well as traditional and indigenous resources practice, are understood and taken into consideration. In most developing countries, Conservation is still a difficult concept to sell because the rural people see conservation as a barrier to material progress. Within any given community, various groups are assigned specific tasks and responsibility which are determined by all age, traditions, and cultural values. Without significant attention paid to gender issues in natural resource use and management, much of the efforts to conserve biodiversity will meet with little or no success. By recognizing the role of rural women in developing countries as the people in whose hands and on whose shoulders rest the burden for the conservation and sustainable use of natural resources is crucial in the fight against hunger and poverty. How? We go to the subdivision of Cameroon. Women in this area, they trek for hours. Some go in the day, some in the night, in search of snails. In this area, snail is the main source of protein that the whole community depends on. These 
snails are destined for household consumption or for commercialization. When they are sold, the cash is served for the payment of school fees for the children. These same women cover the same distance or more in search of non-timber forest products such as bush mango, bush pepper, country onions, and other. This non-timber forest products gives an added diversity and flavoring in their diet, thus encourage food consumption. To add color on the descriptive of poor rural women, we caught up with the group leader of empowerment NGO, Ewane Divine. In the area of uh, uh, responsible citizenship, we are working uh, on the forced early childhood marriages. And in that, we, we are in partnership with the Diocese of Manfi. In fact, you can see the t-shirt I'm, uh, I'm wearing. It's, uh, it's part of this uh, Our campaign. Our means school. In yeah. Pigeon, it, 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 the translation of this into English means I am craving to go to school. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and in fact, you see here, because what happens is that in, in the area that we are focusing on this program in Akwaya, girls that are un, unborn, unborn children are, 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 are sent to marriage. A woman gets pregnant and an old man uh, meets the family. If the child becomes a woman, then he will want to he, he start giving money to, to, to marry the, 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 the child. And such children, they are sent for, for marriage even when they are just about uh, four or five years old. Some go to their husband's houses thinking that they are either uncles or, or, uh, or, brothers. or brothers and so on. And they, they only realize that they are in their husband's house when they are about nine years old and when their breasts start protruding and the man starts making advances, making advances to, to take them to bed. So some of those uh, Things are very traumatizing to those girls. And I think I also found out from your papers that you're implementing this project with Carford England as well. Yes, Carford England is actually the, the sponsor of this project and uh, sponsored the, the Diocese of Manfe jointly with the Empowerment. The Diocese of Manfe is the legal respondent of the project. Thank you very much for talking to the African Center for Community and Development and to people, places and events. Thank you very much. Many women today deny themselves meals just to ensure that their children are fed. That is a personal uh, experience. When there's not enough food, I make sure that my son eats and the father eats as well. <laughs> <laughs> These women in turn suffer the effect of severe malnutrition, which inevitably will breed the children's fate as well, potentially leading in a vicious cycle of general morbidity within the family and society at large. Empowering women as key change agents. How can women be empowered? Studies have revealed that when women are supported and empowered, all of the society benefits. No, don't you feel me? And uh, you just listen to a young girl who was saying that the Nigerian community here is totally very angry. It covers all those aspects of making the various things of our kids. This was the country of the Niger Delta of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He went to several schools. His major academic genesis was at People government doing, college, Ujeli. Go, go gather, um, destroy their food. With the way they come, and, uh, and uh, that other camp, some other camp, you know, compensate everybody. But some of them. In a key generation, sometimes. Today, our focus will be on the style of JP Clark, a poet and writer, and we shall also be very interested in his poem, Akbar Dancer. Some lives are meaningful. Too much meaning and riches to offer humankind. Long after some of these earthly adventures and no more, one can still find footprints of these great lives on the pavements of our contemporary lives. Good evening, you're welcome to the program Green Planet.